good morning from Amon Jordan. We are feeling so much better, very refreshed after pretty much sleeping all of yesterday to recover from our two overnight travel journeys. We are now coming back with a vengeance to do a full day of touristing in this amazing city. And we've started off by going to a little hole in the wall coffee place called Cam. It cost us one dinar, so two dollars for two large Turkish coffees, which were absolutely delicious. And now we're beginning our touristing by going to the Roman theatre. So let's get started. Roman theater was built in the city of Philadelphia, which we just learned was the ancient name for Amman. It was built in the second century AD, I think by the emperor, they said Pius or Pius, not sure how you say it. And it had a seating capacity of 6,000. And as you can see, it's all in still amazing condition. And the other reason for that, which I'm sure you also saw, is because this still seems to be in use. They are in the process of setting up for an event right now. They've got a soundstage, they got a big screen and drum kits and all of that kind of stuff. So clearly they are still using this as a concert venue even now. So you're probably wondering why we haven't mentioned an entrance fee just yet. And that is due to this nifty little document called a Jordan Pass. The Jordan Pass is an all-in-one tourist solution for anybody who's planning on coming into the country for any more than four days at a time. Typically, the visa to enter the country would be 40 dinar, so 75 Canadian dollars. However, what they have decided to do is introduce the Jordan Pass that doesn't just waive that fee altogether, but for the price of that pass, then it also gets you entry for a certain number of days in Petra, according to the tier that you take, as well as 40 other different attractions dotted around the country, including ones in Amman, like this one. When you then come into the country, then you are taken into a separate customs queue, specifically for those that have the Jordan Pass. If you don't, then you will need to pay the 40 dinar fee, but from our perspective, we went into that queue. It took us about 15 to 20 minutes to just get through the queue. And the whole process, end to end, took us probably about 20 to 30 minutes. Super simple. You went through, they scanned your Jordan Pass, put a stamp into the passport. Then you go through to passport control, and then that's it. You're in Jordan. As for then coming in and activating your Jordan Pass, you just have to go to one of the attractions that is listed on their website, which we will put in the description and off you go. That is your passport for all things tourists in Jordan from there on in. But the thing is, if you don't do that prior to arrival in Jordan, then you're not allowed to then buy it when you arrive. So therefore, make sure that you buy this before you come into the country and always have it on you, especially if you're doing a day of tourism like we're doing today. sister of the Roman theater. It's right next door and it was also built around the second century AD by that same emperor Antonius Pius. It's so cute in here. Osama, our walking tour guide, has recommended Jordanian coffee which is different than Turkish coffee because he said this is spicier because they put more cardamom on it. So I'm looking forward to trying this. It smells great, you can really smell the cardamom. 
Oh, it tastes great, yeah. You can definitely taste more cardamom, and because I'm a huge fan of that flavor anyway, it's fantastic. This is Barazic, a famous Jordanian cookie. Now trying a medjool date. These are fresh chickpeas that you can make hummus with. We're now at Lucky Corner and what you do is you throw a tea bag on the ceiling and if it sticks there it's good luck but if it falls back down it's bad luck. We've just finished the walking tour and it was fantastic. On a lot of other walking tours that we've had in the past, then it's talked a lot about going to all the historical sites and talking a lot more about the history, but this one was far more about the day-to-day -day life of being in Amman. So it was extremely unique. The other really cool thing was that our guide, Osama, also runs a food tour and he was very keen to give us kind of a hybrid experience so it was kind of a normal walking tour that we'd expect rolled in with some food and free samples at the same time and it just really made for a very varied and complete tour for me personally what did you think yeah that was one of my favorite tours we've ever done don't get me wrong i love tours that incorporate history but i really liked seeing day-to-day -day life we went to so many different markets like fruit and vegetable markets and a market where you could get all kinds of meat like innards, the head, the hoofs to see that. We saw a gold and silver market which wasn't running because today is a weekend but apparently there's an electronic board that shows you like the daily price of gold and silver so there's no bartering all the stores offer the same price you're just finding a piece that you like which I thought was interesting. I love that we got to try all kinds of food, like the smoothies and the dates and cookies and traditional food. And he gave us the best recommendations for food. So I just absolutely loved this tour because it was different and we got a feel of how real Jordanians live in real life. It's now lunchtime. We are strongly hankering for some falafel and hummus. So we're gonna to go to a place that was recommended to us by our tour guide and enjoy some stuff. Let's go. So this is the place where our tour guide recommended us to come. It's called Abu Omar and it's just off of Rainbow Street. And so we decided to order a lot. In accordance with the recommendations, then we have gone for hummus, 
pickled mutabal, falafel, stuffed falafel, and that already comes with a bit of a salad and also some pizza and I think some free water as well. So let's dig in. I just took a bite into this falafel and it is amazing. The outside is so crispy, the inside is so soft, it's hot, it has I think tahini on it and then like the zadar spice to die for. So this is mutabal. Still not sure quite what is in it, but honestly it's one of the most refreshing dips and it pairs so well with the falafel that we've absolutely devoured. And honestly, it's just incredible. So we're gonna scoop it up. Yeah, absolute gem of a thing. Wish we could find this everywhere else. After having it gone absolutely ham on the normal falafel, this is a stuffed falafel, which is significantly larger. We'll find out what's in it. Here we go. Mm. Oh my god. It just all blends perfectly. And the little sesame seeds on top add a little bit of added crunch as well. So good. After having taken a couple of bites into it, it looks like it's stuffed with what looks like some tomatoes, a little bit of chili as well to give it a little bit of an extra kick. Honestly, this combined with these dips that we've got, perfect combo. You genuinely cannot go wrong. We just finished having lunch at Abu Omar restaurant and you guys have to come here. That was the most incredible tasting traditional Jordanian food that our tour guide Osama recommended. He was not wrong. Like that was a huge amount of food. We had five pitas, we had eight falafels, two stuffed falafels, a full salad, two waters, and then the two pots of dip. That came to 375 Jordanian dinar, which translates to maybe $7.50 Canadian. What incredible value. Put this on the map. delicious lunch we have now come to see the citadel so after doing a little bit of research on the citadel it appears that this particular hill has been inhabited since the neolithic period with evidence going back to as far as the bronze age which means that for upwards of about 4,000 years then there's been something on this hill it's crazy to still be here and there's still a lot that you can see and appreciate a lot of information to then digest but the best thing is this is probably one of the highest spots in the city so the views that you get are amazing I am absolutely in awe that the tools we're seeing right here are from the Stone Age. That's 40,000 to 10,000 years ago. All of these are from the Bronze Age, so these are potentially 5,000 plus years old. I don't know how they are in such good condition, considering how quickly things wear out these days. My mind is absolutely blown after going into the Jordan Archaeological Museum. I cannot compute that kind of time. My mind doesn't understand, it can't conceptualize how long ago that was, but it was so interesting to see the tools and the jewelry and the pottery they had because it shows that they really lived the same way as us, but they just used the materials that were readily available. I mean, they had storage containers for food, they had very basic oil lamps, they had yes. jewelry, they would make beads out of wood and stone, they had tools like axes, they had jugs and bowls. They lived the same way, just more simply. I think it's only kind of started to really dawn on me how close to the real like cradle of civilization we actually are. I think this is kind of one of the first times that 
when it's come to that period in time that I've seen more than just kind of an artist's impression of how that would have looked. That I've actually seen like genuine tools that have been used because they were dug up locally in this area in particular. So the fact that we are so close to kind of where our ancestors really began is crazy to think about. somewhere in the 8th century. The large domed building that we were in was just the entranceway to this palace which should probably give you a really good idea as to the size and vastness of this space. It's amazing to think that there was something this large due to the chances of royalty being around here and also apparently the ancient cisterns that we used during Roman times were then remodeled as a means of still providing the people who lived in this palace with running water. So it's just amazing how they repurposed this land for their own purposes in itself. We have just got back to our hotel after a really fun and somewhat long day out of sightseeing. Mm -hmm. It was really cool. I thoroughly enjoyed getting to explore the city. It's got a lot of really cool things about it and also the fact that we got pointed out to all the local food, especially the best places to go, is a major help, and especially since it was all delicious. I have just felt so welcomed here in Amman. Me too. Everyone is crazy welcoming and if they ask you to come into their restaurant or if you want a taxi and you say no, thank you, they accept it and move on. Yep. Everyone here also speaks really good English. Well, maybe not everyone, but the majority of people. And that is a complete shock to me. I wasn't expecting that, but our tour guide said that apparently they start learning English in kindergarten here. But yeah, everyone is just so nice and kind and helpful. Yeah, definitely bodes well for the rest of our time here in Jordan, especially since we're going to be exploring a fair amount more of the country. Mm -hmm. Super excited for that. But until next time, take care. And keep smiling. Mm -hmm.